What is bitrate? If you're a live streamer or you use OBS or a program like it to record video, you need to understand how to adjust bitrate for streaming or recording so that you can control the quality and also the performance of your live stream or your recorded file. It's not the easiest thing to explain, but I'm gonna to try to do it in the least technical way possible so that it's just easy to understand and then you can walk away from this video knowing how to set the perfect bitrate for what you're doing. So there's a metaphor that I like to use that I think explains bitrate. Picture a sink in your home. Now the final output of the water coming out of your sink is basically two factors. The first one is the width of the pipe that's servicing the faucet. And then the second thing is how open or close you adjust the knob to allow water to flow through. We can think of a data stream coming out of your streaming software out to the live platform or the amount of data going into your recording file when you record in the same way. So let's start with the metaphor of the width of the pipe that's serving the faucet. So you have your scene and within your scene, you have all these sources, uh, webcam and uh, game capture and all kinds of stuff making your layout and what people see. You also have your microphone and audio sources and those also contribute to the total data load in order to present your scene. You may have a really high quality microphone and be using stereo. You may have a 4K game or video capture, really high quality webcam. And you may have set the properties of some of those sources to capture a lot of information. So in simple terms, let's consider that the most amount of data that you've placed into a scene and could go out into a live stream or a file. That's the width of your pipe. Now we'll move over to the second component of the metaphor, which is the handle that you adjust to open or close the amount of water that comes out of that faucet. Ultimately, that's the final output that your audience gets when they're watching your stream or they're watching your video file. If you open it a little bit, then only some of the total data will make its way out to the viewer, if you open it all the way, then all of that data tries to get out. Now that could be actually pretty harmful if you try to open the faucet all the way up. I'll explain that a little bit later and how to avoid that. I'm also gonna show you OBS in just a second on where to set your bitrate and other things that you need to also set and consider. But the basic point here is that the bitrate that you set is basically how much you decide to open or close that to determine the performance and quality of what finally gets to your audience or in your recording file. Hopefully that makes it not sound too crazy. And if you're like some sort of video expert and I've messed up some part of the explanation, please mention it in the comments. But hopefully my explanation just kind of makes it practical. So how do you go in OBS Studio, set your bitrate, and ensure that other settings are really optimized for performance and quality? So first we'll open up settings. And once we're here, there's a couple tabs that we need to pay attention to. The main one is the output tab. And in there, you're gonna see a field for video bitrate, but I actually want you to first go to output mode at the top and change that to advanced. There's a lot of reasons for that that may become obvious as we go through this. Now we have a streaming tab and a separate recording tab because you may want those settings to be different. So if we go through streaming first, one of the things that you wanna check is your encoder. That is basically whether or not you're using software through your CPU or hardware if you have a dedicated graphics card. And if you do have a dedicated card, you want to set it to that so that your CPU is not trying to run your whole computer and process your graphics. That's what a graphics card is for. So click that dropdown. And if you see something with like an H, then that's suggesting it's hardware. And you'll probably see the name of the brand of your graphics card. Mine is an NVIDIA, so I wanna select that. Now you're gonna see a whole bunch of additional settings because your graphics card is capable of a few more things. So here's your bitrate field, and that's where you're gonna enter your bitrate for live streaming because we're in the streaming tab. Now remember when we talked about how much you wanna open or close? That's bitrate. And there's actually one factor that I did not mention in the sort of faucet metaphor that's actually super important, and that is your internet service provider and how much upload is available to you. Now, how do we check that? Really easy, let's go open a browser. It can be Firefox or Chrome or Edge or whatever you use. And we're gonna type in speedtest.net. 
Now, before you hit go, you probably want to close as many applications that are consuming internet bandwidth as possible. So close any other tabs and browsers that you've got going on. Uh, hopefully you don't do this while you're live streaming. And that way you have as little data consumption happening while you do this test. So really easy, you're just gonna click go and you're gonna let this thing run. And it's gonna check three things. First, it's gonna check your ping, which is just how quickly a piece of data goes out and comes back to you. Then it's gonna check your download rate of what is the maximum speed you can download something, get something from the internet to you. And then it's gonna check your upload rate, which is how quickly you can send data from you out to the internet. Now this is gonna be expressed in megs. Basically that's a thousand bits. So six megs would be a 6,000 bit rate. Now I have a fiber internet connection here at home. So my download and upload rates are pretty awesome. Everybody's gonna have something different because we all have different service providers and different packages or plans. Basically what you're doing by checking this is to figure out where your ceiling is for live streaming, which is your upload. So whatever upload number is here is basically the maximum amount of data you can try to push out without running into performance issues like buffering, lag, and stuff like that. Now you need to know that ceiling because if you try to set your bit rate higher than your ceiling, you're going to have issues. You're gonna lag, your stream's gonna buffer, it's not gonna be great. So you need to set your bit rate below that ceiling. And I recommend that you actually leave a gap. So let's say for argument's sake that your upload rate is six megs. Well, you don't wanna set your bit rate to 6,000 because you're touching that ceiling and the data output you're gonna have when you're live streaming is actually gonna fluctuate a little bit. So when it fluctuates above six, it's going to suck. So you wanna leave a gap. I would say if your speed test is telling you you have six megs of upload, then you probably wanna set your bit rate to like four at max 5,000 because now you have a one to 2,000 ceiling gap to account for any fluctuations in data and prevent yourself from having occasional lag. But again, this is gonna be different for everybody. If I streamed with a 6,000 bit rate, but I have a 715 meg upload ceiling, I'm more than likely gonna have no problems. Now there's another thing that's worth understanding, which is that various platforms will have a data ceiling of their own. So for example, if you're streaming to Twitch, Twitch can only receive a maximum of a 6,000 bit rate. So if you were to set your bit rate above 6,000 in OBS, it's not going to contribute to any improved quality for your audience. That is their ingesting maximum. So what you'd be doing is only harming yourself by potentially running into performance issues by trying to exceed that ceiling. So if you're gonna to stream to Twitch, the maximum you should ever set your bitrate to in OBS is 6,000. But that doesn't mean just go ahead and put 6,000 in OBS because like I said, you have to know your internet speed and you have to know where the ceiling is at. If your ceiling is four megs and you put it at six, you're gonna have issues. So now let's return to OBS and actually decide on some settings. In here is a default. And like I said, if let's say for example, you have um, 10 megs or better upload rate, then you're streaming to Twitch, you might as well set this to 6,000 and then do a test stream and see how it goes. If you run into performance issues, you can start by reducing your bit rate. I would say maybe reduce it by 2,000 at a time. So if you're lagging out at six, go down to four and see how it goes. And you can actually adjust bit rate while you're live. You don't have to go offline. There are other settings in OBS that you would have to go offline in order to change, but bit rate is not one of them. It will update in real time and you'll start to see an adjustment in performance uh, after a few seconds or so. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're streaming and gaming from a laptop, they just don't have very powerful graphics cards. And sometimes you can only choose software as the encoder. So it's not very powerful. And you may want to actually start off, even if you have a great upload rate for your internet service, at a lower bit rate, like a 1500 or a 2500. Yeah, it doesn't sound great, but performance is more important than quality. An audience can handle watching a lower resolution stream, but they cannot handle watching a stream that lags, buffers, and crashes. All right, so the next thing you wanna look at here after deciding on a bit rate is your preset. And that's basically saying, what does OBS prioritize when making decisions about how to process your data? 
Is it going to prioritize quality, right? The, the visual quality, um, but that may mean that it might sacrifice performance in order to try to give you that quality. Uh, I like to actually set performance when I'm live streaming because like I said, stability to me and an audience is probably gonna be a lot more important than quality. Now let's talk about recording. We'll go into the recording tab. There's a lot of decisions we can make here. And we're talking about deciding on a bit rate and other settings with recording. Really ultimately what we're thinking about are two things, file size of that recording and then the quality in that recording, right? How sharp, how many pixels, stuff like that. Um, just how clean and beautiful it looks. Now, one major thing that I highly recommend if you're gonna use OBS to record is for recording format to actually use MKV instead of changing this to MP4. Yes, setting it to MP4 is gonna make that file immediately usable. You can play it, you can edit it. Um, but if you select MP4 here and then the power goes out or OBS crashes, unfortunately, your recording file is going to be gone. So what if you were streaming, recording for like four or five hours and it was really important, you're recording a great YouTube video, your power goes out, file is gone and you have to start over. MKV, however, will save wherever you were in your recording process. So your power goes out, you're gonna get a file, even though everything crashed, that has all of that data up to that point. Now, you have to convert MKV files after you're done recording and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can also do that in OBS. So again, we wanna check encoder, right? Are we using software to encode like this X264 where your CPU is doing the work or are we gonna use hardware? You should always select hardware if you can. And then down here is your bit rate. Here, you don't have to think about your ISP and your upload speeds because this is for recording. It's not going out somewhere else. It's gonna write a file on your computer. So this is, like I said, the maximum amount of quality visually that will exist in your recording. And you can kind of think of it as the amount of pixels within a frame of your recording. Basically, more is better, but the higher you set this bit rate, the larger your file size is going to be for that recording. And you wanna make sure you don't set this insanely high because you may run out of disk space while you're recording if it's a huge file. If you're gonna do 1080p where your canvas is 1920 by 1080, We'll look at Canvas settings in a second. There's kind of a range where increasing your bitrate no longer results in an improvement in quality that's perceivable by the viewer of your video. And the other thing to think about too is that even video platforms where you upload your video file have maximums just like streaming platforms do. So if you're gonna go on YouTube, for example, you can go onto their help page and you can look up what that maximum is and then I just recommend you set your bitrate to that if that's the platform that you're recording for. Because why exceed that if they're just going to scale it back down? If you're really concerned about file size, then do some test recordings and change the bitrate from one to another and then see what the resulting file size is, difference between those two bitrates, and then make a decision that's practical for you. Again, you have a preset selection where you can choose quality or performance. And that's really all about whether or not your hardware is really strong then you can set it for quality. If you have weaker hardware, you're on a laptop or something like that, you may wanna set it to performance. That way you don't have chop and lag and drop frames in your recording because there's nothing you can do about that in editing. That stutter is in your file. I personally use performance even though I have a really great graphics card because ultimately, again, stability in the visual to me is more important than quality. So if we go to the video tab now, we're gonna see the base canvas resolution, which is the size and quality of the preview screen in OBS where you build your scene. And the output scaled resolution is the last little bit that OBS is gonna do to your data on the way out in terms of the physical size. So whether it goes out to your stream or it goes into a recording file, that's gonna be the physical size of the window. Now, if you want a 1080 file, you need to change this because the default usually in OBS sets to 720. You want 1080 if that's what you're doing, but you have to check to make sure that these match. So they're both 1920 by 1080. Now I mentioned if you're recording and you're gonna use MKV as the file format, which I highly recommend, you're gonna to have to convert that file to MP4 through OBS or somewhere else. But it's convenient to just do it in OBS. If you go to advanced, 
and you go to this recording area, you can actually check this box that says automatically remux to MP4. So when you hit stop recording, you're gonna see a window pop up that's going to convert that file for you. And then there you have it. Now you have the original uh, as a backup and you have the MP4, which is immediately viewable, uploadable, editable, all that stuff. But I finished recording, where did my file go? If you go back to the output tab and you go to the recording tab, you can see the path that the file is going to save to and you can click browse and change the destination. Make sure you hit apply and okay. Now that you understand bitrate, you should also understand how to improve the quality of your webcam and your microphone. So make sure you check out these two videos and I'll see you around.